Uh, how many of you are PhD students? So the, uh, the day of your quals is the day you are the smartest you will ever be in the history of your life. And I would, I would also uh, argue that after this week, you might be the smartest that you'll ever be in terms of like breadth of energy uh, in your whole life. Um, and actually, you guys, uh, you know, Arpita and the team putting this together is phenomenal. I know it's a lot of work. And, you know, so I was a, a PhD student at MIT uh, a decade ago, and we didn't have anything like this. And so when, was, when you're trying to find people to go change the world with in energy and climate, it was really hard to find them. So I think you're in a really great situation. So how many of you are interested in creating a startup in energy or climate uh, out of your Stanford experience? How many of you are interested in joining a startup, potentially? Uh, and how many of you want to be professors? All right, so I think all of you would benefit from taking our course, the Energy Transformation <laughs> Collaborative. Um, the, this, I think there aren't MBA students here, right? It's, it's, so the MBA students, when they see the name Energy Transformation Collaborative, they think that we're doing like drum circles and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to be clear to you, this is a hardcore energy ventures class. Uh, or you're going to learn a lot of a lot of major skills. Uh, you're going to you're going to really build a tool set. Um, you're going to learn how to launch new ventures. And if uh, the, our track record holds true this year, you're forty percent of the teams are going to launch new companies. Um, and so I want to start by introducing our team, uh, our team of instructors. We have a dream team here, um, starting with uh, Joel Moxley, who's over here. If you can raise your hand, Joel and I were contemporaries at MIT. We got our PhDs at the same time. Uh, kind of when MIT went through a big, uh, a big focus on energy, uh, and we've had our careers in energy ever since. Uh, and Joel, Joel's story to me kind of starts, he's the consummate entrepreneur. He kind of eats and breathes entrepreneurship every moment uh, of every day. And uh, the kind of the epitome of, of his story is that when he was a PhD student, this was in the early days of, of data analytics and before Moneyball, he took $300 and turn it into three, uh, $3,000 and turn it into $300,000 using data analytics to bet on baseball when it was legal, when it was legal. Uh, <laughs> since then, Joel has been a founder of multiple energy companies and other companies that he sold uh, and is now also an investor um, in a number of companies across the spectrum of energy and other areas, uh, including an early investor in a company called Rub Rubicon Global, which is a unicorn that is essentially the, the, a, multi, a more than billion dollar value company that uh, is kind of like the Uber for trash collection. Um, but, and Joel and I are actually work together at Breakthrough Energy Ventures, which I'll say a word about in a second. Uh, and then Stuart, uh, we like to call him the, the silent or quiet assassin. Uh, you know, he actually brings a wealth of experience from all the way back to like Sun Microsystems. So he's been in Silicon Valley uh, through, I'd say the, the multiple generations of advanced technology so I think he brings a ton of expertise in startups uh, and especially around, um, you know, uh, I'd say exponential technology driven startups, uh, like especially around machine learning, AI, data analytics, these kind of areas. Um, and, you know, he, he speaks about 10 percent of the time and delivers 80 percent of the value in the course. And then uh, myself, Dave Danielson, uh, I am a managing director of Breakthrough Energy Ventures now, which is a, a one point three billion dollar new investment fund that Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and 20 other of people who add up to about a half a trillion dollars of net worth have created to in, invest in the, the kind of the climate tech game-changing companies of the future. Uh, and for that, I was, uh, I was the Assistant Secretary of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy at DOE, where I oversaw the nation's uh, clean energy research and development programs and was also a founder of ARPA-E, which is kind of like a high-risk, high-reward part of DOE that really kind of backs game-changer technologies. I did my PhD in uh, material science for that. And so, you know, just to tee this up, I think you probably heard a lot about the problem, but I'll just provide the context once again, is that in my mind, clean energy and climate is the defining challenge and the defining opportunity of our time. You know, if you look at where we are today, you know, uh, energy usage uh, is correlated with human development. And a large, a large part of the world, I say, you know, you know five or six billion people don't have access to the, the amount of energy that they need to reach a level of human development that we have in North America, Europe, and other kind of more developed nations. And so as we go from now to the, let's say, the mid-century, 2050, uh, it's going to be a great thing for those people to get access to more and, and more cheap energy 
so that they can raise their human development index and their, their well-being. So there are people all over the world who are going to be driving at least a doubling of energy usage uh, out to 2050. Uh, at the same time, uh, as I'm sure you've heard a lot about, our, our, our scientists are now clear that if we don't reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 80% or more by the middle of the century, then we're toast. So we've got to double the amount of energy at least over the next 30 years or so, and we've got to reduce the footprint by a factor of five. So it's a 10x kind of problem. This is a huge problem, and it's going to require a lot of work. And so what I also want to give you a little bit of context in is, is that you know, 2050 can feel far away. Once you have a kid, it doesn't feel far away, but, uh, but it can feel pretty far away, 2050. So it's like, you know, it's about, you got about, you got about 30 years, you know, we got, we can kick back a little bit, right? Um, 80% greenhouse gas reduction by 2050. If you create a disruptive new technology and it's in the market and it's working, uh, it's going to take you, I'd say, aggressively 20 years to get to a meaningful scale, a scale that would, that would make a dent in this problem. And then uh, if you kind of work backward, so that means you got to get any new product if you're going to disrupt, if you're going to really solve this problem, you got to get a new game-changing product into the market by 2030 commercially. And uh, any real, you know, hard tech, especially like major new technology is going to take you 10 years from idea to commercialization. And so if you really think about this and you work backwards, it's really like now and over the next two, three, four, maybe five years, that the 2050 impact startups need to be created. And so I, you know, my view is it, that it's, you're in a really unique time and unique place where you're in the hub of global entrepreneurship. Also, I'd say one of the leading hubs of energy thought leadership and innovation. Uh, and you're also just happen to be here at the time that's essentially the last five years where building a startup is going to affect 2050. So you're in a really important time and place. And that's what this class is all about. We're really at the intersection of energy and climate and the kind of unique entrepreneurial spirit that, that is really uh, embodied in the Stanford community. Um, and so what we're really all about here is what's interesting is many of you uh, probably tracked, there's this clean tech boom bust in the like kind of early 2000s, late 2000s, where uh, a whole bunch of money went into these uh, clean energy ventures and there were a massive number of failures. And so what we saw was this big, big, you know, boom and then a, a bust. And now we're coming out and funding is coming back and entrepreneurship is coming back. And, you know, one thing that we need to be doing and we're doing a breakthrough and that we're doing in this class is we need to together develop a new playbook for how to build these, you know, major, you know, uh, major impact climate tech companies. And so part of what we're doing in this class is we, ha we have playbooks uh, of the right way to build these companies. And we're continuing to, to, through our experience at Breakthrough Energy Ventures and elsewhere, to continue to build out what are the playbooks it's going to take. And I think working with you in this class, we're going to continue to write chapters of the playbook required to build successful clean tech and climate tech startups. The other thing we want to do is, is put in your hands tools that you can put in your tool belt for the rest of your career that will allow you, I'd say, not only to, to launch new ventures and be a, successful in startups, but also, in some sense, what I found is, is non-MBAs are kind of getting like a 10-week accelerated MBA in this class. And we kind of teach both at a level where if you don't know anything about business, you're going to learn a lot. And if you're an MBA who's, who's pretty far uh, up the curve, you're going to learn a lot as well. Uh, and then finally, like I said, about 40, we have about 40% of our teams over the last two years uh, have resulted in the launch of a transformative new venture. And so I think uh, not only are you going to get the tools in the tool belt, uh, but there's a, a reasonable shot that uh, if you join one of these teams, uh, the, a company is going to come out of it. And so just some of the basics, um, we really are focusing on giving you this replicable tool set that allows you to identify interesting opportunity areas, to assess, uh, to analyze and assess whether those areas are, are ripe for a new venture, and then to really design and, and, uh, and develop a game plan for launching a new venture. And that's a replicable skill set you can apply to any problem over the rest of your career. Uh, every quarter, we have about four or five project teams that are on the order of four or five, six people. So it's about 20 to 30 students uh, each quarter. We run this every quarter. Um, this is project-based. So what we do is we, we kind of we recruit embryonic new venture concepts and usually people who have those. Either, either it could be someone looking at an intersectional opportunity of two megatrends that, uh, that haven't been solved. For example, you know, we're, we're, we're running out of cobalt for electric vehicles. We want to go look at that and find a venture opportunity. Or it could be someone coming in, 
I got a technology out of Stanford lab and I want to go create a startup. Uh, and so there, there's a lot of flexibility, but we really build around, you know, we have four or five uh, embryonic new venture concepts that, that then we, we build teams around. And so it's, you don't have, you can have an idea and, and uh, lead a team, or you can just come in and say, hey, I want to be involved. I want to join one of these teams. Um, and uh, my, mainly graduate students and just uh, a few undergrads uh, have been involved. I think one thing that's really valuable about the course is it's very multidisciplinary. So it's about half uh, MBA uh, students and half non-MBA, so more uh, technology uh, engineering students. And I think you find that you're able to learn a lot from each other and actually do things that you never could have done without each other, which I think is exciting. And we also are going to expose you to some of the leaders in the clean energy and climate field. So we've had leaders like Vinod Kosla, one of the uh, most uh, important venture capitalists in Silicon Valley and, uh, and in energy. Jagdeep Singh, who is a, a Stanford alum who's created multiple billion dollar companies and is now leading a, a, billion, a more than billion dollar valued company developing a next gen solid state battery. And a, a whole bunch of other interesting people that you're going to get to hear from and get really kind of candid perspectives, kind of behind closed doors, candid perspectives and kind of hear about their journey their insights um, and, and ideas that they have for areas that if they were starting over again, they would, uh, they would look to launch new ventures in. And so in terms of just the results that we've seen over the last couple of years is 120 students getting a, a really exciting new set of tools, a new skill set that they are able to apply to uh, other parts of their life and career. You know, like I said, if you're a professor, you may spin out a company or you may have someone spin out a company from your lab. I think you're going to want to understand, uh, understand even if you're not going to go leave with the venture, if you're going to be involved in it, I think you want to understand how that works. Uh, and so I'd say whether you want to do a, lead a startup, create a startup, join a startup, or be a professor, those are, you're going to get a lot from this class. Uh, so we've had 25 project teams over the last three years, and 10 new companies have launched from those teams. And uh, four of those have already gotten private investment. I think it's probably above $3 million now of private you know, venture investment in addition to probably twice that amount of government uh, funding and grants. And two of these uh, companies already have revenue you know, in, in a very short period of time. And so we've got uh, AI Onyx, actually. So our, our TA is going to be Austin Sendek, who's defending his PhD thesis in, in two weeks. So he's probably not listening to anything that I'm saying. But uh, he's going to be our TA. He took the course. And out of the, he looked at the intersect. He was doing research on machine learning applied to battery innovation and uh, ended up doing a, a lot of exploration and turning over a lot of rocks and ultimately finding a, a really great business model for starting a new company in this area and has now launched the company and uh, actually has revenue with, with major uh, parties on the outside. Climate AI is a company that, that was taking kind of advanced uh, modeling simulation of climate and climate impacts to provide risk mitigation services to the, the industry, insurance, uh, insurance industry and others. Moraine is looking at optimization of charging of autonomous electric vehicles fleets in the future. Safi Analytics is looking at, they've actually now launched their company in Kenya and is, uh, is building a company to do kind of advanced uh, meter and, uh, and data analytics driven industrial energy management for com industrial companies in Africa. And, and Fervo, I think you may have heard from Tim already on. Um, but I wanted to use Fervo as a really interesting, I think, case study uh, of what, it, what it's like to do a, a project here. So Tim uh, had, you know, had come from the auto industry and then was in the, the shale patch in Texas where he learned a ton about the emerging technology of horizontal drilling and multi-zonal stimulation. And they came to Stanford and was really interested in applying that to geothermal. And so he took our class one quarter and, and worked on a different project than the second quarter he, he launched into a very aggressive effort to explore the, this intersectional opportunity and was able to recruit a really amazing team of people from, you know, I think there were half MBA, half uh, PhD postdocs on this team and it ended up resulting in a couple of these folks going and launching the company. But I think everyone else uh, gained an amazing new skill set that now they're applying to, to other things that they're doing out in the world today. Uh, and I, I think you already heard about this, but you know, I think this is an example, I think, of like uh, a potentially game-changing venture. And I just saw today that the United States just surpassed oil production of Saudi Arabia for the first time, and, it, and anyone can remember, um, just in the last month or so. And that was because of the shale revolution. Imagine a world where, you know, when you look out to 2050, everyone thinks there's like zero geothermal. But if, if Tim and his team are successful, 
then we may be looking back and saying, holy crap, I can't believe that we, we didn't realize that geothermal was going to be the next shale boom. So um, if you're interested, please get in touch with us. Send us a note. Uh, follow up with us after outside. Um, the way we do this is we, we accept a lot of people's ideas for project uh, concepts that they want to lead. And then we select uh, four or five of those project concepts that we think uh, have the most uh, promise to be good projects in our class. And then uh, individuals who just want to get involved, we, we invite you to sign up for the class, uh, reach out to us, um, and we'll get you connected to the people who are rallying these projects so that you can try to find good fits and join teams that will be a, a, a good experience for you. And so we'll, we'll, we'll work hard to get you connected to, to the right kind of team. And if you don't take it this quarter, you can take it the next quarter or, or the quarter after. And so um, thank you for your time. Uh, you know, we, we get really excited about investing a substantial amount of our time here because we know how unique students are here and how entrepreneurial they are. And so you know, we're excited about putting time into you because we really believe that you know, if you really invest in yourself and think big here, that you can be the people that are actually creating these, these companies that are going to solve the 2050 climate crisis. So thank you very much. Looking forward to working with you guys.